and every one. It's time to tune in to Alternative Frequencies, the show that brings you what the other side has to say. Good evening, everyone. Tonight on Alternative Frequencies, my special guest is Rick Wade. Rick is a psychic, a mind reader, and an author. His soon-to-be-released book, My Paranormal Journey, One Man's Obsession, is sure to be a great read, and Rick's going to join us and tell us all about his journey and his obsession. Also on the show tonight, I'm going to share with you a Joe's Box file where I asked the other side the question, should I cut my hair? I'd like to give a big shout out to all the great folks over at the Hazy Radio Network and also my UK affiliate, Birmingham City Radio. I'm so glad to be with you this evening. And while I load up that Joe's Box file, we're going to hear a quick word from our sponsors so please stick around Dixie Ghost Land Paracon Aiken, South Carolina July the 27th and 28th 2013 www.lightstream-media.com Four major paranormal and historical hotspots paranormal celebrities paranormal acknowledgments and awards come see paranormal celebrity Blaine Rohan of Scare Radio International Stephen Hill author of Something Unseen and radio host of Alternative Frequencies Andrea Perrin author of the trilogy House of Darkness House of Light Jason Satin of Ghost Chat Radio the Paranormal Rebel with Sepia co-manager of TAPS Jeff Leeper also see Daryl Campbell of My Ghost Story caught on camera. The entire team of paranormal pros, Kim Brulette and Chris Matheny, co-authors of Secrets in the Shallows and radio hosts. See the Bama Boys of Deep South Paranormal, Sci-Fi, and Keith Age of Spook TV and the Orb Tones. Come to Dixie Ghostland Paracon, www.lightstream-media.com. If you'd like to find out more about Something Unseen, you can do so by visiting Amazon. Check out the true story of my haunting, Something Unseen. The views and opinions expressed on this network do not reflect anyone here. Thank goodness, because there's a reason we're all on radio instead of TV. Therefore, we shall not be responsible for any personal injury, property damage, accident, delay, world wars, sudden appearance of unwanted nose hairs or blemishes, collapse of the World Bank, freak accidents, delays, or inconvenience, or more importantly, being out of chocolate fudge ripple ice cream at Ben & Jerry. Hi, caramba! We take responsibility for nothing. We know nothing and will admit to nothing. You're listening to Alternative Frequencies with host Stephen Hill. Now back to the show. Hello to everyone in the chat room. And if you're not in the Hazy chat room, just go to hazyradio.com, click on the own air chat button and you can join all the other alternative freaks in the chat room so we'd love to see you there you know there's a great event coming up in just two weeks as you heard on the promo i ran just a few moments ago the dixie ghostland paracon will be held in aiken south carolina july 27th and 28th i can't wait to get to aiken um see a lot of great people I'll be there myself. Come investigate with me and hear my spirit radio presentation while I'll be playing some files that seem to dictate that the law of percentages override the possibility of randomness. So I hope to see each and every one of you there. I know many are coming, and uh, this really is shaping up to be a great, great event. Four haunted locations will be investigating at night, as well as the presentations during the day. And uh, again, I hope each and every one of you can make it. Now to that Joe's Box file I was telling you about. And I want to keep this fairly short because I want to give Rick Wade, my guest tonight, lots of time to 
tell his story. But I've been letting my hair grow for several months, and uh, it's starting to get very hot <laughs> under this uh, rag top of thick hair. So I asked the other side during the session, should I cut my hair? And here's what they had to say. Should I cut my hair or let it grow? All the time. All the time. And for those of you who may not be familiar with the Joe's Box, the Joe's Box is a purpose-built spirit communication radio. And I've used many different radios, but the Joe's Box has always been one of my favorite, of course, designed and built by electronics engineer Joe Siopi Sr. And again, it puts forth some of the clearest responses of any radio that I've ever used. And in that file... I asked, should I cut my hair or let it grow? And the immediate response was, all the time. And that kind of confused me because I wasn't sure if they were saying, yes, cut it or let it grow all the time. But then the next thing I hear is a very clear voice that says, off. So I'm assuming they are advising me to get it cut. Uh, Then the next thing I hear is three words, proud of hair. And I am proud of my hair. It's uh, salt and pepper. And now more salt than pepper <laughs> as I grow older. But I think I will get it cut because it's just too hot in this humid weather. Here's the file once more. Type in the chat room what you hear. Should I cut my hair or let it grow? All the time. All the time. Of course, I don't do everything the other side suggests that I do, but I like to ask that type of questions about me personally just to see what the response might be. And again, in that file, I think they're uh, telling me they think I should get it cut. So tomorrow, I'll be going to the barbershop for a trim. Now, I've been conducting spirit radio sessions for the past seven years. And even through all of the hundreds and hundreds of responses and recordings I have on file, even I can't hear what's being said in real time correctly. All of the time, I might get 50% of it correct. But I like to repeat the words that they say just so they know that I hear them. I'm going to play one more file for you. This one I just uh, recorded to earlier this afternoon. And... I thought they said help when actually they said stop. Uh, And you'll hear in the file where, again, I uh, misinterpreted what they were saying because the voice said died. And I thought he was saying hi, so I say hi back. Um, And then he tells me his name. And, again, I misunderstood what he was saying. I understood the name. His name is Richardson. But I misunderstood exactly what he was saying. So listen closely to this file and type in the chat room what you hear. Help. Who asked for help? Richardson. Richardson. Hi. Hi. Your old Richardson. (laughs) You say good old Richardson? Yes. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's a prime example of why we must record all of our spirit radio communication because it is very hard to discern what's being said in real time. Now, as you could hear in that file, again, when it said stop, I thought it said help. I asked, who asked for help? And I hear the name Richardson, and I heard that. And then he says, died, which, I again, I thought he said, hi, so I responded. And then he says, dear old Richardson, which I interpreted as good old Richardson. And I said, did, you know, I asked, did you just say 
good old Richardson? And he said, yes. Uh, and then I hear the name Rick. And we're going to have Rick Wade on with us uh, right after I share this file with you again. And we'll go ahead and get the break out of the way. So uh, listen closely once more to hear what the other side has to say. Help. Who asked for help? Richardson. Richardson. Hi. Hi. Your old Richardson. <laughs> Rick. Did you say good old Richardson? Yes. Yes. Now, the skeptical would say that this is all random radio bleed through that we are matrixing into what we want or expect to hear. Now, I don't blame them for their views because I was once a skeptic of this communication myself. But again, after seven years of researching, recording, I've come to the conclusion that this is real-time communication with some form of intelligence on the other side. We're going to be right back with my special guest, Mr. Rick Wade, right after this break. So please, don't go nowhere. Dixie Ghostland Paracon, Aiken, South Carolina, July the 27th and 28th, 2013. www.lightstream-media.com Four major paranormal and historical hotspots, paranormal celebrities, paranormal acknowledgments and awards. Come see paranormal celebrity Blaine Rohan of Scare Radio International, Stephen Hill, author of Something Unseen and radio host of Alternative Frequencies, Andrea Perrin, author of the trilogy House of Darkness, House of Light, Jason Satin of Ghost Chat Radio, The Paranormal Rebel with Sepia. Co-manager of TAPS, Jeff Leeper. Also see Daryl Campbell of My Ghost Story Caught on Camera. The entire team of paranormal pros, Kim Brulette and Chris Matheny, co-authors of Secrets in the Shallows and radio hosts. See the Bama Boys of Deep South Paranormal sci-fi and key age of spook tv and the orb tones come to dixie ghostland paracon www.lightstream-media.com the opinions and views expressed on this program may not necessarily be those of the hazy radio network birmingham city radio network its sponsors affiliates or those on the other side you're listening to Alternative Frequencies with host Stephen Hill. Now back to the show. And we're back here live with my special guest, Mr. Rick Wade, psychic, mind reader, author, and his new book, My Paranormal Journey, One Man's Obsession, is coming out in just a few weeks. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Rick Wade, are you out there? Yes, sir. How you doing? Oh, man, I am doing just fine. And thank you for taking your time uh, to come on the show this evening. No problem. I'm excited, actually. I'm very excited. It's been a hot day, but uh here down in my basement relaxing in the cool air conditioning. There you go. That's the place to be. Uh, Rick, I have to ask you... Um, you know, I was kind of a late bloomer myself, but what first led you down the path that you now tread? Well, basically what it was, well, see, you know, I and my wife, you know, she wanted to record an actual paranormal ghost show. Okay. And I, I thought it would be kind of cool to sit there and, you know, watch the show. And then one day my son came down and he uh, said, hey, Dad, let's go check out this old house down at the end of the road. It's kind of creepy. <laughs> so I went down there, you know, just hanging out with, you know, my son and son-in-law and and I walked around the side of the house, and I looked up there, and I seen this shutter door. And the shutter door was actually open, and I said, if there's any spirits would like to communicate, shut the door. And it shut instantly for me, like that. Well, that just blew me away. So I didn't think it was a win. I just knew there was a connection here. So I basically ran and got... Ran back to my house and I got my video camera, which, you know, I really wasn't very good with the video camera. My wife did that, you know, videotaping with the kids. But I came back and I had it on actually night vision because I really didn't know, even know how to use it. But my uh, son-in-law showed me how to use it. 
So I, I pointed up at the house, and I said, if there's any spirits here want to communicate, open the door. I said it one more time, and that door opened, and a creaky sound. You can hear that sound going, <laughs> and that just blew me away. Well, that Rick, was actually my opening. That was my waking up into the paranormal field. You know, I, I watched the show, but I never even thought I'd actually go out and be a ghost hunter, you know. Well, I've watched a lot of paranormal videos, and I've seen that one. And, uh, yeah, it just sent uh, chills down my spine, to be honest with you. That was a great, great video. And it was very, very exciting. And what happened is, from that point on, I said to myself, I'm going to actually put time and energy in this. And I'm going to actually see if there's actually spirits and there's actually ghosts out there. And that started my journey. Was that one door, that one experience, pushed me, fueled me into the paranormal field. Well, I think we get pushed into the paranormal field, those of us who are meant to be here. And, uh, you know, it's just amazing that our paths have crossed. And I can't wait for your book to come out. Uh, I think that's going to be phenomenal. It's very exciting because yeah, a lot of things happen in my book from actually just a beginner ghost hunter to actually working harder and working harder with the energies with the spirits i was basically earning respect out there even though i was doing it by myself i was still earning that respect from the spirits so you have to be nice to all spirits and all energies you can't be mean to them if you be nice to them they'll be nice back to you and that was the key for me I always treat every time I walked into a house, to a building, to a riverbank, wherever anything happened, I always was nice to that spirit. And they always gave me something to take home with me that kept that fuel and kept that excitement. And that was the key to my journey. There was always something new being shown. Absolutely. And that is excellent. It's a learning experience and just like us. They want to be treated with kindness and respect. And if we do that, then we'll get much better results than if we take the other avenue, which is uh, provoking, which I don't condone. What do you feel about provoking spirits? Well, I'll be honest with you. See, I actually joined an actual paranormal team in my book, and I actually watched, you know, I actually took them to some of the places where I actually, you know, was really nice to the spirits. And they actually were mean and they would holler they would say come out you know they would say bad names they would actually break things in the old houses and that right there was a no-no for me they were disrespecting them and that actually got me to actually move away from the paranormal teams and go back in the field by myself again because i knew what i wanted was to treat them nice and treat them kind because every time i did that they always gave me something back and yeah. that is really an excellent thing. And that kindness, if you do that, when you go out on a paranormal hunt and you actually treat them nice, you will get more information. You will get more interesting things. And that's exactly what I based my whole research on, was actually doing that, being nice to the spirits. And that's how things happened for me. It was like a path. I would start at one point. I would be taken to another point to another point, to another point. It was really exciting. I always got to a higher level, and that actually helped me to where I'm at right now. Well, Rick, I know you're a very uh, gifted individual, a very gifted young man. And, um, you know, i like to talk more about this ESP. Uh, okay. I know that you read minds. and. Uh, yes. You know, I just want to know more about that. How did how did that come about? Because it's very interesting to me. Well, basically, what it was, you know, I you know after I got done you know, through my journey and doing uh, recordings, I actually started hearing and seeing things. And uh, on my actual job, I would actually write down on paper or even put on the recorder. I would say, okay, I'm going to just think of what's at my next house. And it got to a point where I was getting twenty percent correct. Oh, that's cool. I'm still hitting something. It got to the point where I was getting 40% correct. Next thing you know, I was at 80% correct. And what I would see was basically like I actually got to the point where I could actually hear the conversation, what was going to be said to me in the house when I walked in the house. 
So I walk in the house, and for instance, I had on the recorder, I said to myself, I hear the lady talking about the dungeon. So I walk into her house. I have to go down, and I have to do some work in her basement. And as her words come out, I want to take you down to my dungeon. Okay, so that's exactly what I'd heard ten minutes earlier. So that's what was happening to me. I was actually being able to pick up future things with my mind. And I would write down on paper things I would see throughout the day. And everything I would write down would come true. But the thing is, what I was doing was making my mind open to seeing this stuff. It's like it got to a point where it was actually coming to me. I didn't have to look anymore. I could write it down, and next thing you know, it would be there. I wouldn't have to look for it. It would just come right to me. It was like validation. So what I got to a point, what I would do is actually go on like a lot of these paranormal sites and psychic sites, and I would put like a reading board up. And I'll say, let me just go ahead and let me just read you. Please come on and let me read you. And people would come on, and what I would do is just sit there and just concentrate. And what I would do is hear actual voices and telling me stuff. Like, for instance, of this person wants to read, I would hear in my ear saying, she broke her leg. So I would write that down on my information and send it over to her. And she would come back and she would say, yes, I broke my leg last year. So see, what I was doing was getting validation from them. But then I would actually see. Sometimes I would actually see the actual information and hear it at the same time. So it got to a point where I think the whole journey was building up to being able to see and hear and feel things from other people. And if I wouldn't have had that whole process to happen, I might not have been able to do what I can do now. But I actually made an effort in every way to try to connect with all these individuals all around the world. And then I used this information, and what would happen is, I would actually start getting more and more requests and more and more requests. And the more I did it, the more I think my mind actually opened up. It actually opened up more parts of my brain to where I can actually do more than the average person. And what I am in right now in my business, I actually measure flooring. And I'm constantly putting thousands of numbers in my head. And see, I can actually go in a house and I can do tons of measurements, have a full conversation with the customer, and never make a mistake. Because I, I feel like I have maybe to a point where I, I can section off one part of my brain to communicate with them and section off another part of my brain to do my job. And that's very rare. Most people can't do that. And whenever I walk into people's houses, they, like, they want to study me. They want to know how am I doing this. But well, that is, that's just part of my journey. I open up more of my brain. And well, then Rick, I just uh, reading. go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that brings up a good point. And I noticed one time you posted uh, that your obsession almost cost you your job one time. Would you care to tell us about that? Well, definitely. See, uh, what I did is I actually took the recorder in an actual job site. And what I did is, you know, I'm excited about the recording, the hearing the voices. I went into this lady's house and she was talking about a missing person. Uh, and I said, you know, I actually do recordings, and I can actually pick up things on a recorder. I can hear voices. And uh, so she said, well, why don't you record my house? I'm like, okay, no problem. So I went, and I recorded her house, walked through her whole house. And I actually, I was still learning. I really, you know, I wasn't to a point where I can actually see things. I was actually using a recorder, but I was slowly advancing. So I would walk into her basement. I got this cold feeling. And then I walked in the kitchen, and I said to her, I said, you know, I feel... Like, my heart is racing. I felt like I drank 12 cups of coffee. And she bursted out in tears because her father died not very far from where I was. He drank 12 cups of coffee every day. And he died of a heart attack. Wow. And it brought her to tears. Well, I was so excited. I was helping her. Well, then she told her husband, and then he called my company, and it, they gave me a warning. They said, listen, don't ever do this. And they ended up giving them, of course, some probably some money off or something. But I, what happened is an act, her husband actually called the police. And the police were knocking at my door Saturday morning. 
And I'm out doing some work, and my wife called me, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, you know, I, my heart dropped, you know. And I came back there, I had, to, they, they, I had to talk to the police officer. I said, listen, sir, I was just trying to help, you know, I was trying to, you know, you know connect with her father. And uh, it actually went away. Well, then I end up, when I started getting my visions, I did the same thing on my computer screen. I drew what I was going to see at my next job. And I, I had ten things I drew. And I actually showed it to her. You know, come on, Rick, come on. You know, you don't do this. So I showed it to her because she was talking about all these ghost shows and listening to people something. And this is perfect. So I showed it to her, everything about her house. And she actually called in too. And they said to me, he said, Rick, you do it one more time and you're fired. One more time. We can have no more complaints about your spirit connecting or energies. You cannot talk about this. So yes, it got to the point where my wife hid my recorder from me <laughs> and uh, because I was so obsessed. But see, the thing is, the spirits would not let me go. They had a mission for me. I didn't know exactly what it was, but now I know. And that's to help people. And that's what I've been doing for the last five years is actually helping people in the paranormal field, in missing person cases, anything I can do to help a person. If they lost a loved one, I give them information. And I hear this stuff. I feel this stuff. Sometimes I can actually feel their death. And I give that information to them. And I'm telling you the joy, the happiness that that person gets from my read brings me to tears. And I do cry a lot. Sorry, but I do cry a lot because it touches me. And a lot of times I actually feel them feeling that response. And I'm actually in tears knowing that they're reading it. Well, so your, it's amazing. Your amazing empathy, feeling. Your empathy is strong, my friend. It uh, definitely is. I can feel it in your voice. Um, but that is very interesting, the fact that you helped some people and on the job and ended up almost losing your job. Uh, I find that ironic, but um, really, I think, and you mentioned, you know, self-confidence builds, and that, like what I do with my electronic mediumship, with the electronic voice phenomena, and, and the spirit radios, the more you do it, the more open you become, and I think that's what's happening in your case, to a very, very high degree, and your story is so interesting, Rick, you've got a, uh, we've got a chat room full of your fans here. Well, that's and, excellent. Uh, Thank you all. And uh, what we're going to do, we're going to skip all breaks for the rest of the show until the top of the hour uh, because your story is so interesting. Now, the missing persons cases. Yes. I find that very, very interesting. Are there any that you're at liberty to discuss with us this evening? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, see, whenever I first was doing my recorder in my town, I actually was out on a job. And this lady was talking about this gentleman that was missing, probably about half an hour from where I live. And I thought, you know, this would be interesting to take this audio recorder and actually communicate, try to communicate with this missing person. So what I did is I called up the actual brother of the missing person. And I said to him, I said, hey, uh, this is what I do. I do recordings. I don't know if it's going to help or not. I would like to actually meet up with you if you wouldn't mind. And he agreed. So I ended up meeting with him on a Sunday, and I drove down this road where his brother lived. And I went down there, and, and here he was, and then there was a detective there, and then there was a, a detective's girlfriend. And I went up there and met the gentleman. As a matter of fact, two of the brothers were there. He had two other brothers. So I went in and I did my recordings around the house, in the house. I went outside, and at the same time, I was, I was feeling things. I actually walked outside, and I could feel I was being choked. Oh. So I, as I'm doing this, as I'm doing this recording, I'm talking, and you can see their eyes popping out, you know, because they, they knew stuff. They had other mediums there. They had other people there. So I took the audio. I went back home, and I listened to it. I write down all the audio. I was writing. I was getting to a point where I was getting probably, I've got over 5,000 EVPs. And what I was doing is I was taking those audios, and I was taking that back to the brother, and I would give him what I was hearing. And he said, that is exactly my brother. And every point, the way you're picking up, the way he acts, the way he stutters, the way everything is my brother. You're giving me information. And I actually, on this recording, 
I actually got the actual killer's name. Wow. I didn't understand it because sometimes when the spirits come through, you can't hear that recording correctly. As I but, illustrated on the show earlier with some of my uh, judge box files. Yes, I agree. And, and what it was is basically I got the name. I gave the name to the actual brother, but I didn't understand it. Well, later on, they end up, and even more information, I can actually hear them actually hitting him. I could actually hear them actually dragging him. All this information was there. So I gave that to the to the brother. And later on, a couple years later, and I worked many times going to this house and, and to try to help. And, and what happened was it got in the news. Boom. Next thing you know, the guy that actually did the actual killing, well, they haven't proved it yet, but he's in jail. But um, I actually went to his house two months before. And actually did work at his house and measured his house for flooring. And that is really weird because it was like I was put there for a reason, okay? Exactly. So, and, and, and that's what happened is, is all the information I had on audio, I save. Well, years later, that information is right on target. Everything I gave him was right on target to what happened to this guy. They never found him, but the information that I got was actually for real. And I used that on many, I went to other police departments and used that audio. I went to a missing girl and I gave them information. They actually took me around to the actual place where the girl went missing. And they found her, but they took me to all the special places and I did recordings. I gave it back to the police department. But what really got me was the actual audio was changing on me. So for instance, say it said Tom did it. The next day I'd listen to that audio and it would say, the frog jumped over the road. <laughs> do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm I've like, had that happen. This is not uh, good. Yeah, electronic voice phenomenon is all frequency. And uh, so, sometimes they seem to change without notice. And I've had that happen to me as well. But what was interesting was I started fading away from the audio. And that's when I started getting my visions because that was my, well, was planned for me. But that audio, I saved all that audio, and all that audio, every bit of it makes sense. Every bit of the EVPs actually makes sense now that the cases are done. It actually fits in the story. So the spirits were communicating with me correctly. But I tell you what, whenever I started working on these cases, I started every case that came, happened, I would go to that place and do a recording. I didn't care if it was night, one, two, three in the morning, during the day, because I drove all the time. But what was scary was all these police were looking at me saying, well, this guy is over here, this guy is over there, this guy is over here. But, you know, I had proof where I was because on my computer program, it has an actual schedule on my computer program. But they started seeing this guy is helping. This guy is helping all the time. But, you know, they never really took me serious. So I actually joined an actual psychic site to actually psychic crime fighters actually help on missing people. And I tell you what, the stuff that was coming through for me in these cases are interesting. I was actually using all of my gifts to find these people, to locate information, to get information. And when I started working with a professor on the Smiley case murders, and what it is is actually they find these young boys drown and they would see a smiley face somewhere hidden on a rock or on a tree. So I started working with, with this professor, and what was interesting was he said to me, he said, you know, the way you read is very interesting because you're, A, picking up my train of thought, B, are the parents' train of thought, the killer's thoughts, the actual victim's thoughts. So you're picking up everything about the case, which is interesting because he already knows about the case, and he sees where I'm picking all these points up. And he said he's never, ever in his life ever met anybody that can read the way I read. Wow, well, that is very interesting. phenomenal, Rick. And uh, if you will, Laura Elizabeth in the chat room wanted me to let you know that uh, your good friend and mine, because I've known him for many years, Ron Readers in the chat room listening to you this evening. The man who Ron talks to Readers. angels. Yes, Ron Reader, the man who talks to angels. Oh, really? Yeah, Laura okay. Elizabeth wanted me to let you know that, so I'm just passing. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. How you doing? <laughs> And She's she, a great friend of mine, great I, friend of mine. I'm, I know she is. And, uh, Rick, as far as missing cases, uh, I'm a little bit timid. Uh, a girl disappeared here one time uh, last year in my little hometown. 
and uh, they found her bicycle or helmet and her cell phone by this pond, and I knew that she was in the pond. Well, they sent, div sent divers out, searched the pond, couldn't find her, and dropped the search. So when they exhausted all other avenues, uh, they drained the pond. And I knew the whole time that she was in the pond. I didn't really know why, but, you know, the little gut feeling, the little voice inside my head kept saying, in yes. the pond. But had I dare call them and tell them, uh, no, because I was uh, deathly afraid that I would become suspect number one in her disappearance. But lo and behold, they drained the pond, and there she was. Uh, I couldn't call anyone and say, I told you so. <laughs> but exactly. uh, just and a validation of me. With me. But I, kudos to you for uh, having the uh, intestinal fortitude uh, to do what you do, because I know that's very hard. And, and, the, and the thing is about this, you know, I always wanted to help 110%. No matter where, if I was actually on my job, I would take five minutes to concentrate, see what I could see. I'm always, even with my job, I'm working 70, 75 hours a week. I'm constantly helping people any way I can. That's how I am. I'm a helper. And that's a great thing. And what's interesting is I, I started lately here actually taking people and actually like uh, building like a group on Facebook. And I, what I was doing was actually teaching them how to actually read a picture. And I would show them some of the cases I worked on because I already had the information already. So I already knew. So I would let them come through and let them read, let them see. And I'll tell you what, it is amazing how many people actually has a gift if they're just helped or just shown. And that is a beautiful thing. And that's what my new journey in life is to help as many people as I can to open up and understand that they do have a gift if they make an effort and actually make it a priority. That it will actually work for them. And it's a beautiful thing. How many friends that I, I made so many friends out this one reading board. It was really a beautiful thing. Well, that's that fantastic. They can actually, yeah, they can actually start and be nervous and scared. The next thing you know, they're actually reading on key, on target, picking up information left and right. And that, I've made so many people branch out and become their own. You know, they do their own little business on the side now. They have their own little website now. And it's a beautiful thing. I have a lot of good friends out there. To actually back me up on this, which is a good thing. Well, Rick, one I thing, one thing I admire about you is you say I'm still learning, yes, and definitely. I think I think we're all still learning. And uh, you know, I just wanted to ask you, where do you think the source of your information is coming from? Well, it's a thing. See, I pray to God every day. I pray to God when I do a read. I pray to God. To watch over my family, I pray to God. God is who has given me the information. I feel He's there. I pray to my guides. I pray to guardian angels. I have them all. I just ask for their guidance. I don't pray to them. I ask for their guidance. I pray to God and I ask for their guidance. And that's what happened. See, my mom was an actual reader whenever she was younger. And I didn't know, you know, she actually read coffee cups and stuff. You know, we didn't think anything about it, but things came true. So I'm thinking that I have guides. And my guides are from my ancestors. I have Cherokee Indian in me. So I feel that my guides are from my Cherokee Indian family from way back. And and then they actually come around me and they give me information that helps so many people. And I ask them, every time I do a read, I ask my guides to help me. I ask the Lord, please help me and guide me to see, to help that person that is in need. And I'm telling you, it really comes through. It connects so many ways that it just makes me so happy. And that's what keeps me going because I know that I'm helping that individual. I know it. And that is a good feeling. I don't, I don't actually ask for money or anything. I usually don't do any of that stuff. So if they ask for a read, I try to give it and help as much, as many people as I can. And as you can see on my websites and on my sites, I've actually touched many, many thousands of people with what I've given them. I've checked out it's, your website, it's a beautiful Rick. Thing. Yes. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. I think we are in this to help with other gift we may uh, possess. And, you know, what you and, you and I do are a little bit different. But I think we get our knowledge from the same source. 
And what's, exactly. so, what's so great about electronic voice phenomena and the spirit radios, uh, a good friend of mine who's a psychic, uh, I sent her a couple of files, and she says, my God, those voices I'm hearing are real. <laughs> you know, so that helped her. You know, it was a validation to her that yes, they uh, they are around us, and yes, they do wish to communicate. Uh, but you're right, helping people is what this is all about. I, I myself don't charge for my services, uh, but when I can go into someone's house and through the use of my electronic mediumship, allow that person to possibly speak with her deceased relatives, no um, prior knowledge of any family names, and then tell her the names. Exactly. Um, you know, and, and that makes them feel at ease. But, Rick, uh, your book, uh, My Paranormal Journey, One Man's Obsession, when is that slated to be out? That I don't know exactly. I'm hoping probably by the close to the end of the year, maybe, uh, end of October, maybe November. I don't know exactly. Still working on it. So uh, i send the editing some phrase right now. So <laughs> well, that's, right now. being a published author, I know that's the fun part of the books, the editing. But um, I can't wait to get my hands on that. Now, um, we have several minutes left, and I just wanted you to talk about anything that you wish, any message you want to put out there uh, to the listeners. Well, the thing is, you know, even though this was a big obsession, even though I almost lost my wife, my family, my kids, I mean, I caused a lot of pain. Yes. And a lot of hurt. I lost a lot of friends. I never stopped my mission. I knew there was something that was waiting for me. I knew there was more. And if I kept pushing and kept pushing, that I would receive it. And that, it was a drive. Even though a lot of things, I did a lot of wrong, you know, I, I made mistakes. But I never stopped believing that there was something else out there. I prayed every day for that next gift or that next ability to come. I prayed all the time for it, and it came. So if you pray, it will come. Well, it Rick, will come. did this change uh, your past seems to parallel my own in many ways, but did this realization uh, of your gift change your religious beliefs in any way? You know, I've always believed in God. I've always prayed to God every day. I've always done that. So that is instilled in me. So I think, yes, it has definitely changed. And it has definitely made me more wiser, more understanding, more belief. I believe more in, I know that there's energies out there. I know there's spirits out there. I know there's more than what people think there is out there. There is so much more out there. There is so much more to learn and so much more to understand. And I'm like, I'm still out here learning every day. But I'll tell you what, I believe in God. Yes, I do believe in God. Absolutely. And I believe that He can actually give you stuff. If you actually ask Him and you are true and you believe, I think it's a very powerful thing. And that's the key. If you believe, you will succeed if you want it to happen we will and that's a positive thing that people need to carry in their life they have to believe that's the key absolutely i think in my case um it changed my religious views but it brought me closer to god exactly and i Definitely. think that's the key and i think uh you know that is where the universal source of knowledge as we call it originates would you agree with that? Exactly. Definitely. And I'll tell you what, when I first started doing this, I was actually getting a lot of negative energy. And I'll tell you what happened. Do I have a second or no? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. We've okay, got, I'll uh, tell you what happened. One of my stories in my book, I was actually re researching an old schoolhouse. And I was actually dry. I drove up to this old schoolhouse and I actually drove too far on the side. And my Durango went halfway down in a ditch. Well, this guy came up, you know, and he tried to get me out. He couldn't even budge me. Then another guy came up. He said, I can get you out. I said, sir, there was a guy here a little while ago. He can't get me out. I'm going to get a tow truck. Right. He said, no, I can get you out. So we hooked up. I didn't have to do anything. He pulled me out within a second. Within a second, he pulled me out. And then he, 
I came back and gave him stuff, and he handed me a brochure about God. And he said to me, stop doing what you're doing. Huh. And from that point on, I started thinking, well, you know, am I, what am I doing? Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? And I started seeing Bibles everywhere. So God is around you. He's around you. He definitely is. And he gives you signs. If you pay attention, <laughs> he will give you signs. You just got to pay attention to the signs. And I think, well, that was my turning point from actually, you know, getting into, I got to the point where I was actually, in my book, I was actually lying to my wife. I wasn't telling her the truth. I was telling her I was doing this and doing that. So there was some negative energy around me that was pushing me in a different direction. And I was getting farther away from my wife and kids and from my job. And then God brought me back in. And that's what happened. Then my gifts really started growing. Well, and Rick, that, that is like, was a beautiful thing. That is a great uh, witness. And uh, negative energy does come with what we do. Exactly. I've experienced it myself. So you've come across many people that you're trying to help that you feel are oppressed by spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay. Could you talk a little bit about that? We've got uh, about six minutes left. Okay. Now, we'll say it one more time, what you said. Okay. Have you ever uh, come in contact with anyone you're trying to help that you believe is under spirit oppression, meaning the dark energy, the negative well, I'll energy? I'll tell you what. I met a lady one time, and this was when I was reading, and she lived very far from me. And she actually was having some serious issues. She said that an actual spirit was trying to kill her. Wow. And what she did is she went over to a graveyard and she did this ritual where if you sit in this chair the spirit will come home with you and she actually sat in the chair and well she went home and things started happening she would wake up and she would smell gas and her burners was on but no burners but just the gas was on wow she said weird things would happen next thing you know she'd be driving down the road and boom she got hit by a semi so she had the worst luck the worst luck so she thought negative energy was definitely around she thought she was being possessed Everything. And what I did, I actually, now this is just from me reading her, helped her so much, seeing what was going on. I actually was seeing what was happening in her house. I was actually seeing all the negative energy. I was actually seeing her past, how her past was haunting her. And actually, a lot of this energy was coming from her past, from her dad, from her dad hurting her, from her dad treating her bad. And she finally kind of like seeing what was really happening. And she actually stopped calling me. She stopped connecting with me because things were getting better, better for her. And that's what it was. You have to actually kind of be in that position with that person. And if you can see, like we see, like I see it, I see it, and I give them information, what's really going on in their life, man, it really changes that person. And I give them positive information and say, this is really what's going on with you. You need to actually... Think about this and actually, you know, pray to God and ask these negative energies to leave. And she got to a point where she would do this and she was on the dark side and she prayed more. She prayed more. She believed more. And next thing you know, those negative energies were gone because they was not feeding on her anymore. She was not allowing it to happen. She kind of fought back. And that's a great thing. Exactly. A lot of people that find themselves what I call oppressed, uh, you know, you've got to get yourself out of that victim mentality. And I was once, exactly. there, I was once there myself when my journey began, as I write about in my book. Um, Rick, could you tell us when your book does come out? Where can we get our hands on it? Well, you should be able to get it at uh, Amazon or Kindle. It should be in Amazon stores and in Kindle. Cool. That's where my book, uh, you know, sells the best, on Amazon and on Kindle. Um, but Rick, uh, you've been a great guest and, um, let's see, I had another question for you here. We have a couple more minutes. Oh, 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 I know this is short notice, but if you're available, uh, next Tuesday at the same time, uh, I'll just give you the whole hour if you would like to come on and help people. Okay. That'd be fine. Well, if your schedule's clear, mine is too. And, uh, you're such an interesting guest that. Uh, man, I, I just love for you to come on because this show, Alternative Frequencies, is all about giving spirit a voice in what I do, my electronic mediumship, and what you do. You're giving spirit a voice by sharing your story, 
And I believe our gifts are meant to help. And if you would be kind enough uh, to come back on next week, I will preempt my schedule and give you the entire hour so you can uh, we can let people call into the show. That would be awesome. And you can help them. And uh, I would be so thrilled. That would be great. Definitely. Well, absolutely. Um, Rick, what do you think... Um, <laughs> What do you think the future holds since you're a little, uh, you know, ESP? Um, I know you, you, could you tell us quickly what you think the future holds for, for this well, art? For me? Is that what you're asking? Well, for mankind in general. Well, I'll be honest with you. I think that we are all getting more and more knowledgeable of what's going on. We all are. And we're opening up more and more every day. There is another, there is more and more people understanding, getting knowledge, and it is a beautiful thing. And what's going to happen is there's going to be more and more people that can actually do what I do. It's going to get to a point where a lot of people can do it. So it won't be the same as it is now, but it's going to be more open. I think we're all going to open up. We're going to be more together more unity and that is the key there everybody's going to be able to communicate better and i know the communication nowadays is not like it used to be 30 years ago people used to hang out people used to cook together i think right now see i can see right now that communication and unity is getting stronger and stronger every day and with facebook and myspace everybody like i just like i talked the other day you know i don't really have any friends out here around my neighborhood or anything, but I have so many friends around the world. So many friends. Because we connect. We help each other, and I think there's a lot of people helping each other right now. Absolutely. And that is a beautiful thing. And I think uh, everything happens for a reason. And, uh, you know, I think people are thrown together uh, for a purpose. Yes, and, uh, I definitely. Think, I think you're uh, really, uh, a really good example of uh, helping people. Well, Rick, you've been a great guest. We're all out of time and, uh, you know, happy to announce that you'll be on next week. We'll, we'll be taking call-ins to the show and, uh, I can't wait. So, Rick, thank you so much. You've been a thank stellar you, guest, sir. very interesting guest. And we will see you next week, my friend. Thank you, sir. You have a beautiful night. You too. This has been Alternative Frequencies. If you'd like to sponsor the show by advertising your service or event, contact Stalltern4 at gmail.com. That's S-T-A-L-L-T-U-R-N 4 at gmail.com. Until next week, good night.